Hi guys, Mr. Roth Waffles here. Welcome to the first episode of the No Nonsense podcast, as I am temporarily and maybe permanently, but I'm unsure, calling it. Uh, our guest today is none other than the infamous, as it currently stands, Act Man. Act Man, how are you doing today? Doing fantastic. Glad to be on the first episode of No Nonsense podcast. Hell yeah. The, it's all downhill name... from here. <laughs> yeah the name is pure lies because nonsense i'm sure will be will be proliferated in the next hour uh, as we are going to dig in to the controversy that you've been wrapped up in in the last couple of days regarding modern warfare zombies because it's been it's been a bit of a roller coaster but before we get into that i need to just hear a good 30 seconds to a minute on who the hell you are and what brings you around these parts to talk to me about Modern Warfare Zombies. What brings me around these parts? Call of Duty. <laughs> Every year I come around these parts again to throw my flaming hot takes out there and then I retreat back into my man cave. You got your ninja stars that you're just chucking out and then you're like, I'm gone, brother. Yeah, See you later. Yeah. I'll let you guys chew on that for a bit. No, uh, yeah, I'm the Axe Man. I do all kinds of gaming videos. You may have seen some of the Call of Duty ones. Um, of course, uh, most of them are like, here's what I think about the game, reviews, opinion-based stuff, which can always get murky with people, you know. There's some hardcore COD Ghost fans out there, and uh, they, you know, some of them just didn't like what I had to say about ghosts. <laughs> You know, you it, and since then it's been downhill. Is that is that the? <laughs> like, well, no, it's it's just kind of like every year. You know, it doesn't matter how good a Call of Duty game is, you are going to have like one group of people who's like, "This is the worst game ever," and another group who says, "It's the best ever." And there's like just polar opposite extremes every time a new Call of Duty is released. It is kind of funny to see. The zombies community is that to a t there is mm -hmm. always a cohort that's like this is just the best one we've ever had guys uh, maybe apart from in vanguard well <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> i don't even think i think that was that one I'm like trying really hard there but <laughs> that one unified everybody i think that was yeah. that was fun to see weirdly the community was brought together in a big way by that game um brought together outside touching grass because none of us were playing it yeah uh, yeah but so didn't you, you start do a lot working of, like, out around that time you know, may, may, I, I may you have started done, hitting the, You started hitting the gym, like, every other Maybe, day. dude. I was like, you know what? I, I suddenly have loads of free time. What's going on here? This is weird. <laughs> this is alien. But I made the most of it, and long long may that continue. Um, so you post a lot of, like, review, analytical coverage of video games, uh, lots of opinion pieces, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the last week or so the tornado of controversy i feel like that has has been brewing at least on twitter.com hasn't necessarily affected the real world because oh, when does twitter oh, affect has. the real world right oh <laughs> <laughs> no i'm <laughs> kidding <laughs> <laughs> like someone's outside your door like picketing your house yeah like, they got a sign like down with your bad takes or something yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh this all came about because of, I believe, a tweet that you put out. Is that right? A few tweets, yeah. A few tweets, okay. Uh, and we're going to pull one of those tweets up right now and just, just read it to the people so they have some context here, okay? And I've already made a video about this. I've already kind of tried to, to fill people in on the situation, but we'll we'll pull this up here. You said, mm -mm -mm -mm, or would you like to read it? We'll get it in I, your I voice. I want you maybe. to read it, yeah. Do your, <laughs> okay. do your best impression. Your lawyer is really happy right now that I'm the one reading this, <laughs> this tweet. So, you said... <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, I've got to find it here. Dude, the new Warzone Zombies sucks straight ass. <laughs> Who the fuck thought it would be a good idea to put a time limit in a Call of Duty Zombies mode, Lameo? They don't even have a round-based map you can play. This shit is depressing. And then, you followed it up by saying... and I'm not, uh, We'll get to the other tweet in a second, but you also said... I see a lot of copium in the COD community right now. If you guys are nice, Santa might bring you a COD fanboys try to defend Modern Warfare 3 video. So the pot was being stirred. Yeah, I think we could agree yeah. that the pot was being stirred. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah. Sometimes I'm a dick on Twitter. I, I, I try not to be... Uh, it's a bad habit I have of, of stirring the pot with stuff. But I think um, whether you agree or not, at the very least, it like the fact that we're talking about 
about it and that people care and that there is a discussion. It's not like Vanguard where everyone's like, yeah, this is ass. This is like, mm -hmm. like, what what do we do now? We have nothing to talk about and <laughs> no content to make on about zombies. Right, so, right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's definitely good that there's been conversation and that people even care enough to have a conversation, right? Um, I will fully expect. Ask. I will fully accept responsibility for just being blatantly <laughs> inflammatory about it. Though. <laughs> okay, hell yeah, we've got one conciliation. I love that. Yeah. Um, what was the? What was? What prompted that? Did you have a game where you were just like, you just died in tier three when you just got set up and you were just frustrated, or was it like I actually played a couple of games and just all of them were just a bit boring, or like what? What was the motivation behind? the tweet do you just overall think the mode is ass to this day um well there's there's a few things that go into it um mm. what what prompted that tweet i had actually played it with luke hidden xperia we had both played mm -hmm. a, a match of it and we both kind of had similar complaints about like things we didn't like about it and um and and the time limit thing really bothered both of us because as we were playing, we were like, oh my God, dude, we only have 35 minutes of fun left. We have to, you know, what do we do now <laughs> kind of thing? Like we were rushing to, and um, yeah, so I think I just, I, I, I've, I've played it uh, four times, something like that. And, and sure. each time I just kind of feel like bored. Did you have that reaction with any previous zombies mode or no? Well, Vanguard. Okay. Okay. Fair. Valid. Yeah. I felt that after approximately four minutes in vanguard so i feel the pain for sure yeah no this is way better than that though this is way better another okay. huge part of it is just kind of the overall recycled vibe around modern warfare 3 it's like mm. like this also happened with vanguard where they recycled shino numa and like maps from the multiplayer to to like build the, the hotel map. royal yeah. yeah 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 and then this is kind of like a similar thing where it's like okay we're you're playing the campaign on war zone maps and now you're playing zombies on war zone maps or a war zone map, I should say. So yeah. it, it, it just kind of, it gives this vibe to me of like, this isn't, this was born out of convenience, less so like the, the hot new direction for zombies. Right. Okay. So, so we've got time limit as, as sort of complaint number one, as like the, the top of the hierarchy. Is that, is that accurate? The time limit's definitely up there. I, I haven't fully okay. like considered where sure. all my rankings okay, are. Okay, so time limit is at least a significant a significant yeah. issue. The most the, significant the, is mm. is the war zone stuff and just the vibe of every aspect of the game feeling recycled or reused. Okay. And you know, Luke and I actually talked about this. How it, it, I I didn't even realize it for the longest time that most of the world at war Black Ops One zombies maps were just repurposed yep. areas from the campaign. But it mm -hmm. did so in such a way that it was like hard to notice or recognize unless you really paid attention and right. Uh, yeah, like, so so yeah. some context on that for people listening. If you go back all the way to even the first ever zombies map natural on Toten, uh, it's repurposed content. It was not built bespoke to be a zombies map, and that was the only thing that building was ever used for. Um you pass through that building in uh, one of the campaign missions, I think it might be Little Resistance, but I can't remember. Uh, it's certainly in there somewhere. You go on to Verrucht. Verrucht is a multiplayer map. It's the Asylum uh, multiplayer map. Uh, you go onwards to a uh, map like Dereez. Dereez is also repurposed. It was Nightfire uh, multiplayer map. That's much of the similar... Which um, one was Airfield? Was, was Shino Numa Airfield? Oh, or? maybe 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 Airfield is where Narkt was, actually. Yeah, I think yeah. that... There's, I mean, it was it was in multiple places. I mean, and since then, it's been in the game like 19 times. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. They keep using that building all over the shop, as recently as Cold War. Um, so repurposed content is absolutely nothing new in Zombies. Uh, we then had a period in the middle of the sort of Zombies canon, if you will, where we were getting fully bespoke things. So, for example, like a Shino, um, uh, Shadows of Evil in Black Ops 3 obviously does not appear in like a campaign or a multiplayer. Yeah, completely experience. original. Right. Uh, but then in more recent years, I feel like we've reverted away from that again. And so you mentioned Warzone um, and uh, that, sorry, you mentioned Vanguard and uh, that was a, a egregious case of it, I think, where 
we were literally just in spaces that we'd seen before. And then for the first time in history in Vanguard, we had a zombies map drop. And then about five months later, we had another zombies map drop, which was on the same map. It was very strange. Like I didn't play long enough to see the zombies. Yeah, they up. basically changed the color correction, like they changed the skybox so that it was all a different tint. And that was the map. It was a very <laughs> bizarre experience uh, and, and really made people feel like, yeah, we're getting a lot of recycling here. Um, but I, I, I'm curious just to dig into it with Modern Warfare Zombies a little bit. Is the recycling, it, like if that was was present, let's say, in a game where the gameplay itself was perfect, like if it was unbelievably fun, it just happened to be in a space that we'd already been in, would you still have a problem with it? Or is it the combination of the gameplay not really hooking you, com like combined with the fact that you're then not astounded by new terrain that is that is the, the kind of crux of the issue, would you say? Well, it's the same thing um, as like, Halo Reach, you know, Halo Reach got a lot of shit for doing this, for having areas in campaign and then in firefight and then in multiplayer. I always really liked Reach, but even how, uh, despite how much I liked it, I did feel, man, that's kind of, that's kind of lazy, you know, it, maybe it's efficient, mm. but it, to, when you're not aware that something's being recycled or reused, like Elden Ring reused the fucking, uh, Asylum Demon boss as the tree, uh, the tree sent, no, not the tree sentinel. It was the tree avatar, but I didn't even mm. notice that for the longest time. So I think, I think the key is to like recycle, reuse in such a way that, that it's easy for you to forget that you've already seen this before, or it looks so different and plays different that it feels n completely new or mostly new. Mm. I think, okay. um, is what's the, what do you guys think of revelations? Like the greater zombies community. <laughs> Well, the map I, itself, not not the story or anything, just the map. Sure. The 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 map for me in Rev is cool in that despite the fact that it's made up of a of, of a load of recycled stuff, um it feels like it does have its own DNA. Um and I respect the map for that. Um I think that Rev personally suffers from a little bit of art direction or, or, or almost being art directionless in some mm -hmm. senses where it's trying to combine so many different things that you end up with this weird hodgepodge of, of mashed together elements that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the cohesive vibe that you would with a given other zombies map. Um, so I think it sort of loses some points in that regard. But personally, the idea of like teleporting into Narcturon Toten and there being a massive worm there that you hop inside yeah. to pack a punch. That's just like, like, uh, regardless of gameplay, we can take all of the gameplay flow out of it and the map design flow and stuff like that in terms of movement and navigation. I think that it, it it's still, despite the fact that it's recycled, it's still gaining a lot of points for the way that they've plugged things together and, and done cool stuff with it. So it's it's an interesting one. It's a good one to bring up, I think, because... What we're going to probably end up seeing in the future, uh, if Modern Warfare Zombies continues to be successful, is maps like, for example, in Blackout, uh, we had uh, elements of Buried, if you remember that being being included in, in, in that map. Mm -hmm. um, and that was obviously an old Zombies map that was then included in the Blackout map. And Blackout was not a Zombies experience per se. Um, obviously, it had Zombies in it, but it wasn't marketed as the zombies mode of the game right right um but with urzikstan urzikstan is just a war zone map that we are playing zombies in but in future war zone maps if they do pull a blackout and put buried in the in the war zone map or put a bit of revelations or a bit of shangri-la or a bit of call of the dead or whatever the hell if they do that then that is then going to actually be in a zombies space this time and that's going to be weird as hell. Like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about that, to be honest. It's going to be real strange. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's like, you know, because if you look at the zombies map and and the war zone map, you can just overlay the two images and, and the layout from yeah, what so, I see uh, is yeah. just exactly the same, which is, yes, you, for me, you, that's you a problem. On, you play Modern Fair Zombies on the war zone map. It's literally the map. Um, yeah. To the point that players 
that are looking forward to Warzone coming out in season one, uh, practicing, like, learning the map, basically, in zombies, which is a weird thing. <laughs> like, that's never happened before. Um, but it's, on the one hand, a positive because it will mean the players who are normally Warzone super casuals will then look at the zombies mode and they'll feel some familiarity with it instead of it being like, oh my God, like, how the hell do I play Shadows of Evil? This thing's impossible, right? They're not going to bounce off in the same way because they're already, already going to know like, oh, to get through this building, this is where the door is or like blah, blah, blah. Those sorts of elements that are just going to be a bit more handheld. Yeah, uh, but I that's suppose that's issue. nice for the... I suppose that's nice for like Warzone fans. I think most, mm -hmm. most of my complaints would be like overridden if there was a, a round-based zombies map, just like a traditional one as well. Because the, the Warzone mm. zombies, to me, it, it does feel like like this would be a free Halloween event in a lot of other games, or like Junkenstein's Revenge in Overwatch. In some ways, it feels like, oh, we're taking this and, and you know, just putting it on the Warzone map and kind of tweaking some things around. If they had, like, a, a curated round-based zombies map, I, would, I might be singing a different tune. What about if there was uh, an easter egg like a main quest easter egg in the map similar to how outbreak had its own main quest egg uh is that something that you feel like would change your opinion i've never been too big on the easter eggs i i usually i know that's oh. heresy oh. i know oh. <laughs> well I, I i like running through them with people that know how to do them and then they show me like like i always yeah. have fun with that but as okay. far as like figuring out the process you know in like a solo match or something never been the biggest uh that's not what i personally played zombies for um, sure. It is a lot of That's fun to watch to watch people do that though, mm. or like to do it with like when I play with Tim and uh, Lex, you know, and they're just like, okay, so now you got to shoot these seventeen different things uh, and you know run over here and f <laughs> like this whole fucking process, and I'm just like, I'm just like a a, a passenger. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're just sort of like smiling, sitting like in the in the passenger seat, just like, yep, you guys, you guys keep. Keep killing it. Yeah, you shoot those shoot those big bad aliens. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna vibe out here. I'm just gonna have a good time, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um I I it's interesting that that, that is not a big part of your zombies kind of uh play style, if you will. Um, because I think the the main quest in a weird way has has ended up being the primary anchor the a lot of people play zombies around like they'll grind for weeks to try and do an easter egg to try and get it done to try and be like good enough to complete it and then once they beat that quest some people will just rinse it over and over again other people will be like okay i'm good now i'll wait for the next one um but without having that steer round based is basically either high rounds or sort of you like goof around and it's just sort of chaos and then that's and you like kind of tap out right yeah, um, or in I, Cold War think... you would you would exfil, which I thought was cool. I thought it was right. cool in that game because, like, in the higher rounds, it would get more intense. Mm -hmm. um, I have an issue with exfilling in this one because, at least as far as I've seen, you exfil in the in the tier one area, right? Do you always exfil out of the outer circle? There, there can be exfils in the tier two zone, um, but they're they're different so for the purpose of your question yes it's always in tier one oh, okay um, yeah which i find what, is kind of lame because by the time you're ready to exfil like it's it's a given like if you if you lose the exfil and you're in the tier one zone like you, that is a skill issue massive skill issue now a quick heads up for those of you listening to the podcast right now this show is actually sponsored today by act deodorant which you can see here or if you're listening just take my word for it. It smells really good. I actually use this deodorant personally. The Orange Grove scent is my personal favorite. But when you order it, it comes in a box like this with the deodorant inside. And it's plastic free, aluminium free, and cruelty free. So 100% recyclable. And overall, it's just a really nice smell. And out of all the deodorants I've ever used in my life, like this is the one that I like the most. It's genuinely something that I, I really love in my personal life. And I think that you guys are going to love it too. So check it out. It's linked in the description of the video, Act Deodorant. And thank you to Act for for sponsoring the video. Part of what, what happened surrounding the controversy of your take on Twitter was that you basically got quote tweeted with a clip of you actually playing the game, right? Mm -hmm. um, and the caption on the tweet uh, was quoting you saying, Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is ass. And it was like, bro, your ass yep. 
Yep. And so it was a clip of you in what I believe was your first ever game. Is that correct? I think uh, that was either the first or the second. Okay. So close enough. It was like you were just getting into the mode uh, and the storm is expanding and you're like, why, why, why do I have to, I have to exfil? But like, why can't I exfil here? And like, there was a lot of confusion happening in that clip. Um, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I've got a, a whole video talking about this, which I will link on the screen right now. Did um, you check but, out, uh, did you check out the footage of the stream after that happened? I did not. What was on that stream? Well, so there, there was a clip, um, afterwards where I'm kind of just like, I'm, I'm just like, Oh, what was that all about? And then I, I say something like, you know, if you showed this clip to anybody who's like deep into zombies, they would freak out. <laughs> <laughs> you predicted that. And well, oh, yeah, no, no. So I, yeah, I was kind of just like, were you memeing or were you legitimately actually... Because I think there are valid reasons for your confusion there. But if it was actually just you being a goofball, then that's also valid. But I'm curious which of the two it is. I mean, I was like... my So my chat voted for me to play Zombies. And I was like, I don't want to play it. And so I was kind of like, in uh. the back of my head, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna make this painful for them. I'm going <laughs> to okay. play like a dumbass. So was it, there was some intention there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like indignant and stubborn. And I was like, okay. I know what I should do, but I'm just not going to because <laughs> because you guys made me play this. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm with you. Yeah. But I, so that's but I why you were like, but I didn't outwardly I say that. Yeah, I didn't outwardly mm. say that because that kind of, you know, it gives away the shtick. Yeah. You know? Of course. I Like when you quit the game, I was like, there's... <laughs> that is not a serious a serious outcome here. <laughs> like because yeah, if, if you I were... cared, I would have I would have actually like figured it out and tried. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I like, was like, I'm leaving on my own terms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which I respect, right? Like that's 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 fair. And it certainly meant the clip was significantly more entertaining uh to sort of point and laugh at for people on Twitter.com. Um, oh, so I'll absolutely worked. take shit for that, though. But if you guys yeah. think it's like a skill issue, I mean, like I've I've played enough Call of Duty. I I know how to kill zombies. The zombies didn't get me in tier one. I wasn't bitching about difficulty. You know what I mean? It's yeah. But they'll get you in tier two and tier three. Just just that you got tier one <laughs> conquered. But we need to we need to see what you're like in tier, tier two. Tier two. Tier three. Well, actually, Luke and I uh we we mm. went to tier three because I was like, I want to see what that's like. And he was like, dude, you need like a full setup. You need tier like maxed out weapons, triple packed. And we went to it. He got downed. Um the zombies were super fucking fast. Yeah. And I was able to get out, and me and our third went back in and revived him, and we all escaped. So yeah. that was that was like that was fun. I think um going off of that another complaint i have it does kind of tie in with the rounds but it's also like if if you exfil and you get all this good shit and then you come back into it that tier mm. one area is like you don't want to be there you just want to go straight to tier two am i wrong about that because the tier one area is just like super easy if you come yeah. back in with a packed weapon then it's just kind of like why well, is this so here you you <sighs> You you strike you strike on a point of contention I think in the community right now with regards to how the initial power curve should work in the mode. Um, since Cold War, there have been a lot of people that have been frustrated with the fact that you can spawn in with something other than an M1911. They're like, "That's not zombies. I should be spawning in with a pistol. It feels wrong. Like uh, I should go through my normal setup." I love yes, them. Yes, yes, if you like. So well, the but... traditionalists exist, right? They're party yeah. one. Those people. Then you have people that are more of the Cold War era who say spawning in with just a loadout weapon, fine, that works. Uh, the weapon's going to be base rarity, so I then have to get the rarity upgraded, the pack a punch upgraded, and that's you my power curve with, grind. You could spawn with loadout weapons in BO4, right? Like a shotgun? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. True. Very good point. Um, so the... Uh, the next kind of step of that is in Modern Warfare Zombies, you can not only spawn with a loadout weapon, but you can spawn with a loadout weapon and potentially bring in crystals and ether tools to get your and, weapon upgraded the and first, perks second of the match. And all that. And perks, etc. Right. Wonder weapons even. Um, and so you've got the kind of different tiers 
of people in the community that feel like it should work a certain way someone in that third tier of people would say well i spawn in with my op weapon i don't want to be in tier one it's a it's a waste of time i want to go straight to tier, tier two or tier three right but then someone in the middle category in tier two or group two they would say well i want to spawn in with a custom weapon just so i don't have to use a pistol but it's still important to me to go through the process of being a bit underpowered and then doing some stuff to get points so that I can become more powerful and kind of step change up the power curve. Yeah. Um, I, and no one really agrees on that. Uh, it's a real a, a real point of, of discussion, I think, in the community. Uh, and I mean, it sounds like you maybe are leaning towards that camp of saying, like, I want to spawn in a bit more powerful, Right. Uh, and but then I want to go straight into my tier two. Is that is that correct, or am I am I misinterpreting? Um, that? I, I don't really. Would you care rather about... spawn in weaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But be, okay. again, because there's like a time limit. Like I I I think the mm. time limit in the difficulty is, it's kind of, it's kind of rough in my opinion. Mm. Like I said, like the goal is to exfil with all the good shit and then come back in and then go to the hardest area and you know get even better shit to then go back out and then come back in. And then yep. keep doing that gameplay loop, which I get. I know people like that. I don't particularly care. Um, mm. Well, I but... think part of the problem is that that loop is sort of broken right now because you get the good stuff when you exfil, but then you spawn in, you, you have zero points, which they're going to be changing because they're going to add a bank system. But mm. you spawn in currently with zero points and your gun is base level rarity. And so you're like, well... I did all that work in my previous game to get to tier three pack a punch. I spent like 30,000 points on it or 30,000 essence. And now I have to spawn into a new match. And why did I do that? Like I now have to spend another 30 minutes grinding for 30 K essence just to spend five to 10 minutes in tier three. And I then you exfil, could, like, I thought when you exfilled, like you keep the weapon, if even if it's pack a punch, just then the you come base back. weapon. You don't keep the pack a punch level and you don't keep the rarity. So if you get, any kind of upgrades to the weapon during the match, you lose all of that the next time you spawn in. Wow. But you yeah. can bring perks so in with you. But only if you don't use them in the previous game. So let's gotcha. say I buy Jug and it's on my character, like it's equipped, it's used. Um, I then in the next match will not have Jug. Whereas if yeah. I store find a Jug then... can and store exactly. Um, but it means that X-filling is almost disincentivized because it's like well i don't care about keeping my gun like i have a loadout weapon i can bring in in my insured weapon slot so what do i need to exfil for like the the gun pack a punch isn't saved the rarity isn't saved the perks that i've used are not saved if i've got stuff in my in my inventory i want to save for the next match sure but if i tombstone in this match and i die then i get to preserve my inventory and i keep the points i had from the previous match so you're set up a lot faster so it's like that's better than x filling so why would you ever yeah, exfil? it's uh um, it's complicated huh what yeah it's let a me ask you a question system. what do you think mm. of the mode what do you like about it and yeah. uh what like what are your favorite parts about it because as far as i've been like you know talking my shit on twitter or whatever i haven't seen too many people discuss what they love about the mode but i also haven't okay. watched like any zombie review videos sure. yet i've kind of been yeah. formulating my own thoughts on it first and then yeah yeah so i i can break it down uh, the spark notes version because i've posted an hour and a half long review already <laughs> um, yeah i saw that i was, I was like, like oh man yeah god damn <laughs> yeah. so um so i got that out but i'll give you the the really short version um i have always been well i'll give you the positives and then we can we can talk negatives after because i there's a lot sure. of problems that i have with the mode that i want i want improved over the course of the year um the positives for me uh, I think that there has been very little um, uh, done in the past to really bring casual players into the Zombies experience um, with the efficacy and success that they've done with this game. I think that the game needs to be commended just at face value for getting people talking about yeah i want to go grind some zombies even if it's not the zombies we're used to i still think that's a win so just like uh, uh, uh like off the bat i think that's a thumbs up yeah how yep. exactly have that have they done that is the question though right because it was always hard for me as a mm. i describe myself as a hardcore casual and that like okay. uh, i'll play something a lot but I'll, I'll play it the way that i really enjoy it and i won't 
take it to like the extreme of doing yeah. every easter egg but i can get uh -huh. to some high rounds you know what i mean like i'm not bad i'm a yep. hardcore casual so okay uh, yeah, i like that it, description yeah if and, they're and getting I, uh casual players in the war in the zombies that's obviously a plus it just just for win. the mode itself to hopefully you know yeah give it the time effort and love it deserves to kind of keep those people in and then maybe have some new content that uh that is the uh, hope that old men like me want to see <laughs> and then i can be like yeah that's yeah. the zombies right there <laughs> Like, old man, <laughs> old man yells at cloud. <laughs> yeah, Abe Simpson, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, 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 how has it, how has it brought those people in? Well, I think the uh, first of all, uh, the fact that the um, zombies camo unlock path and system and all that sort of stuff that is just like really solid this year. I think that that works in the game's favor. I know that's not a gameplay thing, but. People gave the Zombies Camo Unlock Progression Path a lot of praise in Cold War uh, because what that does is it brings in more casual people and gives them re purpose. It gives them reason to play the game. Um, and so I think that the fact that that is there in this game and it's pretty straightforward and and enticing, um, that's, a, that's a positive. I think that there are moments in the game uh, that I have... Uh, had in my in my ra matches with randoms that I would never have been able to have in previous zombies experiences and I have loved those moments so uh, an example of that would be uh, the other day I went down I was just dead in tier 2 my team were nowhere near me they came all the way across the map to me they picked me up I dropped a guy a ray gun as a thank you he nice. picks the ray gun up he shoots it once he, he like looks at it in his hand, drops the ray gun, runs away. He's like, I don't want this crap. Like, what are you doing? Like moments wow. of, of goofiness like that. I love the fact that there is a sandbox where that can happen. And it's consistent. Like I've had that happen so many times where, for example, there's a very rare ether bike uh, in the game called the Blood Burner. Um, you basically look like Ghost Rider. It's sick. And I think I, I saw found a clip it. of that. I was like, oh man, where's that been? Yeah. So that that is super cool. It's super rare. Being able to then just like drive around the map, find a random, put them on the bike. And then we drove around in tier three and they were like, it was like their second game ever. And they're like on the bike, like what's happening? And I'm like shooting all these crazy bosses in that, in that zone. That's really cool. That's an experience that in a regular zombies map, like they would have got to their like round 10 or whatever their skill level would permit. And then they, they'd be, they'd be toast. There'd be no way for them to continue to participate in the mode. Whereas this mode gives them space to continue to participate and also have like other bits and pieces like dribbled in. So I like, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that there is a uh, sort of, obviously there's a mission system that I have a lot of problems with, but hypothetically, I think that the mission system has promise. Um, it doesn't really work the way I want it to right now, but I think in six months time in act seven or whatever once we get there in in the the seasonal sort of updates of the game um i think that there's a uh, a lot of possibility for the missions that they give us to do as players to be really interesting modifiers to the overall experience so yeah as it unique previously stood and... yeah like in, in round based i would be like okay my goal is just to get to a high round but like once i've done that once why would i do it again like i if i know i can get to round 100 do i need to go to 100 a second time like what is what is the modifier? If you can get to round a hundred in any map, you that takes some balls, man. You need a pause well, feature for that. <laughs> true, very true. So, but but that's the thing is like once you can do that, like my my first hundred plus was on the original Ascension in Black Ops One. I was going for the Amazing world record at the time, map. which was like uh, uh, yeah, classic. One of my favorites. Um, Yoti Slayer and I were kind of competing in the same couple of weeks to try and get around one hundred and fifty. I got around 131 and my PS3 went black screen, turned off. And I was like, okay, well, that's my round. So like if I did that in 20, if I got my year right, 11, um, what, or maybe 10, like what is the reason for me to continue to go to round 100 over and over and over again? It increasingly isn't one compared to a system where it's like, okay, can I um maybe take down this boss in a creative way that the mission system is prompting me to do maybe that's an interesting modifier and if i get some cool zombies unique specific stuff from that hell yeah and the mission system currently 
gives you that bone collector skin, which is a really cool operator skin. I don't like the operator system, to be clear, but that's a positive. The fact that that We're exists. We're stuck with they, it, man. We're stuck with it. We, we fully are. So that's positive. Um, I have had several games where I've got a lot of points. I've gone into tier three. I've grinded through some tier three contracts and just the pace of tier three, I really enjoy. It's really damn hard in there, but you can, like, I can now go in there with like single plate armor and just like a throwing knife and I can have a good time. Like, I don't necessarily even need to worry about the other sort of thing because there are skillful ways that you can navigate that that is new and those sorts of skillful techniques existed in the past to get to high rounds, but now it's at least a different set of building blocks that I'm using to piece together to get that strategy. And the strategy is not, oh, I'm just going to get to the next round. I'm just going to get to the next round. It's like, oh, how can I optimize this specific contract, this escort contract? Like, what do I need to do to make a custom strategy just for that? And then what do I need to do for the abomination contract? And what do I need to do for the mangler and like what have you? And it's it's just a little bit more of a dynamic experience, I suppose. So I like mm-hmm. I like that dynamism as well. Dynamism. Um, hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. So there's positives there, right? And I've I've over, overall I've had a pretty good time. Um, the the rating I gave it in my review, um, I'm at about a six point five, um, and I think the with Out a couple of updates, it, it's going to be at like a seven. That's my current feeling um, because I think it's overall pretty solid, but. There are a lot of things that I actually think that we agree on um, that are problems with the mode that I hope to see fixed over the course of the next several months um, and that I suspect would really positively impact your opinion of the mode too. Well, also, like, uh, Mm. the the time limit difficulty thing, does the mode get more difficult as the clock ticks down? Do zombies get harder? Oh, okay, yeah. See, I feel like... Yeah, it's to do with the, the, the ground that you are standing in, basically. Yeah. Um, and if Which, you're in tier one, they are still tier one at the end of the game. It seems really hard to balance that because if you if you make the mode more challenging as the clock ticks down, then mm. players that aren't as good, they're gonna you're gonna feel even more pre- pressed and rushed to get the good shit. Mm-hmm. But then once you get the good shit, if the difficulty doesn't increase, then that first outer circle is. Like I said, it's just kind of superfluous. It's just there. You yes. don't want to be there because you kill everything in one hit. Um, yeah. So I, I mean, then, I don't, ha- I don't have the answers to the difficulty question, but it's, it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's very hard to balance. I would imagine. Yeah. So like, I, I recognize that they are playing around in a new game design sandbox that they haven't been in before, and so I'm like, okay, there's going to be stuff that's rough. Um, I think that as it stands right now, the mission system has a lot of rough edges. Um, the story right now is not in a very good place, in my opinion. Um, there's aspects of the story that I'm interested in. I don't know to what extent you're a storyline guy. Do you, do you care about the zombie story in any capacity or not really? I, I love the characters and the banter and the one-liners and cer- like so certain aspects. you don't aspects. like the characters in this then because they don't speak. <laughs> uh, they don't have characters in this one. You know, I, yeah. I, I thought about it. In Vanguard Zombies, each of the operators had like specific recorded zombie dialogue. Remember that? They had that quips. Was, yeah. yeah, that was like the, the only thing that was commendable about that mode. And something like that would have been cool for this as well. But, you know, then the file size would probably be an extra, you know, 10, 20 gigabytes to accommodate all the voice lines. But, you know, I'm just... Yeah, it's already already huge as it is I'm just well. shooting but the shit. For, for me, I think a good zombies experience should make someone like you interested about at least one character. I think that that yeah. is like the, the bare minimum for any video game that sort of self-describes as having any kind of story within it, right? I think that if it's failed to make someone like yourself who's played the mode for several hours care about just one singular character or curious or intrigued or or just sort of go, huh? One time, that's all I'm... That's the that's where the, I'm setting the bar. Um, and I don't think that the mode has done that for you. And I don't think that if you played for another 20 hours, it would do that for you still. There you is, know why? I think I have why? a pretty good theory. It's because okay. the the story is almost presented in the same way that the camp that the open combat missions were. The story there oh is gosh. presented same thing with like Spec Ops. And Spec Ops, you know, it's not it's not too bad because 
you know, just the guy talking over a radio, it, you know, it's better than complete silence. But when it comes uh -huh. to like campaign spec ops and now zombies is just kind of the story that's relayed to you by people over a radio, you know, right. as opposed to maybe things you're seeing on screen or, you know, stuff like that. I just, I, I think does the, that make sense? The, it does. I think the stuff on screen that you're referring to sadly can't happen because of the other problem that you mentioned, which is the, the recycled nature of it being a war zone map, right? If you got to the center of this map and there was a big ass 115 meteor and you could like go inside it or something, it would at least start provoking questions, right? But as it stands right now, there is, there are no questions. The map asks no questions of you. It asks you to do no self-interrogation. It asks you to think about nothing. Uh, it just is there as flat land to shoot things on basically and i think that that's something that in the future i would like to see changed in some in, in some capacity because the environmental storytelling of the of the of the mode as it stands is zero there is none. yeah it's not um, really there. there there's guys with guns why why are there guys with guns you know <laughs> oh man yeah so like i could and I, that's the thing is i could tell you the story reason zakaev from what cod 4 is the big bad in this he's the main bad guy don't ask me why. I hate it personally, but he's the big bad guy. He's back again. And he's, is he he's a zombie? Again, he's not. He's just a standard oh. ass dude. Um, but he has hired this, uh, the, the the thing that I, I detest the most, a PMC, a private military contractor, right? Which in COD speak means yet another faction that we just needed to be present so that you could have a bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this PMC is called Terminus Outcomes, and they're meant to be helping Zakaev harvest Ethereum to enrich it so that he has, like, weapons of mass destruction, more or less, right? Mm -hmm. But nobody cares about Terminus outcomes. And so you see people roaming around the map, and they shoot you, and you're like, well, that's annoying. <laughs> and that's, like, the end of the conversation. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. If, Why are there sentry turrets? <laughs> yeah, dude. Like, and if Terminus were, were cool, then I'd be like, okay, fair enough. They have a gun, but, like, at least... I'm motivated to give a damn. But as it stands right now, like the emotional range of Fletcher who leads Terminus Outcomes is, um, uh, oh, guys, we really need to just like toe the line here to do what Zakayev says because we've been hired to do this because we're PMCs. Um, yeah, I so think, that's an issue. I think me. it's overall for me, it's just you use the word hodgepodge. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's a good word to, to describe it because like I, I'm writing some stuff for my review uh, and mm -hmm. I talk about how it's like, so it takes place on a war zone map. It's a DMZ mode. It's kind of like spec ops because there's guys with guns that you shoot and then it's, it's zombies and then they're reusing, uh, enemy types from like Vanguard, Cold War, BO3. Are there any like brand new enemy types in this one? I mean, that weren't mm -hmm. seen in previous games technically the mega abomination is a new version of the abomination that we saw in cold war um and the the abomination in cold war is technically a sort of new uh rebooted version of the magua from black ops 3 oh yeah yeah um, yeah i was gonna say i thought i thought it was straight up from bo3 the magua yeah That's so it's, what it was. it's it's very similar it's just that the new one in this game is bigger and has a slightly different kind of process of it spits out these other zombie things and it's like it's just slightly different um but it's more or less just an upsized version of an old enemy type and yeah, everything see, else is for me that's before. a problem when um yeah when there's too much recycled and there's too much that's just taken from old games and not enough new created in and of itself mm. um but you, we, we kind of you, already talked about that a lot but yeah do you feel like if they if they came out with an update in six months time and they had like four new ai types that were added and uh there was a new island added into the water on the map that you could visit that was not in the warzone version would that okay. make a big difference to you do you think or would I, you still I'd be like well okay yeah because yeah. i feel like with dmz they did that right they had updates like building 21 got added which was not on the same map it was its own map that you would load into um, but that was pretty cool, uh, and I'm hopeful that partially that sort of desire for the zombies community is going to be spoken to with the rift system that they're going to be adding, 
Uh, so in season one, they're adding like an end game experience, which is like Diablo Rifts, sort of, mm. kind of. Um, and that space that you go into, we're hoping is going to actually be custom to zombies, but we don't know. Uh, but I mean, their track record sort of suggests that it's probably going to be reused assets. Um, but yeah, we'll so really, I well, I mean, the the thing with season one is that I think that's when they're adding like brand new maps to multiplayer. So maybe it's mm -hmm. going to be a, like a brand new area. Um, mm. Let's hope know. so. Fingers crossed. Yeah, the time limit. What, what else is there to talk about as far as like the mode itself is concerned? I know there's Do a you... lot. My brain is like, it always jumps around at ADHD brain. The, um, the time limit, I also agree, sucks ass. Uh, but I want to get your opinion on, on this specific aspect of it, right? As designers, the motivation for them to add the time limit, right? What would you say is is the reason that that's there, if you had to guess? Because I've got my own sort of personal theory on why that's there, but I'm curious if you, like, why do you think that they bothered to put that in? Um, I haven't played much DMZ, but was there uh -huh. not a time limit in that mode? Or was I've honestly it... not played it recently enough to remember. Oh. <laughs> I, remember. I okay, think there so, was. Yeah. I think. I, I think there was. Yeah, I think it's it's to set like a hard cap on how long you can play and mm. also to encourage you to exfil. And then it, that might also have something to do with the fact that you can only complete like one series of missions at a time. So mm. maybe they just want you to keep coming to exfil, come back in, complete these missions, come back. Which I have a pro I have a problem with like the challenge system in this game as well. Even in the multiplayer, where it's like okay, daily challenges, and then that's how mm. you are instead of just like leveling up. That's a different conversation. Maybe it has something sure. to do with like you know the whole keep coming back, keep playing, don't ever stop playing this game ever. You know. Um, yeah, except like do stop once you hit the forty five minute mark, so you can reload into a new match. Like yeah. like a weird bouncing. And so, so my my theory on it, yeah, let's hear is it. twofold. One is I think because these are twenty four player lobbies, they want matchmaking to be fast, and the only way matchmaking can be fast is if people are not in twenty four hour games. Like, right. if you're in a match that lasts for six weeks, you're never going to queue in matchmaking, right? So I think part of it is so that they can continuously sustain fast matchmaking times. I think another aspect of it is that. Once you go through the power curve in the mode as it stands right now, um, let's say you got tier three pack a punch, max level uh, rarity on a weapon, etc. Um, your incentive to exfil, right, is okay. I want to unlock some stuff, some schematics, right, in the in the menus. So that is the primary reason to exfil. If you don't have schematics, you have no reason to exfil yet. Um, and so, as it as it stands right now, if you were max power, what I think players would do is they would spend five hours in a game, they would go through tier three, they would completely rinse tier three, and the, the stages of experience that they would have in a given match would go from the setup in tier one to mid power in tier two to 90% power in tier three to eventually max max power in tier three. That's when you got your tier three, your gold rarity, like monkey bombs, all the stuff, right? All the bells and whistles. But then you're, you'd be static there and you mm -hmm. would spend so much time there that you'd come into another game and you'd be like, why would I do it again? Like, no. why, would I, why would I do it again? I, I, I've already done all the missions five times in a row in that, in that previous match. What, 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 is, what is left? What, like, what do I do here? Um, and so I think from the developer's perspective, my assumption is that they're trying to counteract that by saying, okay, we want you to be moving through different exper like zones of experience. The tier one setting up experience. The tier two mid power experience. The tier three still a little bit underpowered experience. The tier four full power experience. Or tier three full sounds power a, experience. It sounds a little like Diablo four with all these tiers. Now that now that you mention well, it, yeah, it sounds <laughs> a little familiar. Yeah, but I think they I think they want you to be constantly changing like power level um, because that will then promote just the gameplay feeling different even if ultimately it's the same sort of sort of result it just means that like an experience that you would have at tier one is not going to be an experience that you would have at tier two so like they're going to give you opportunity to have tier one level experiences by kicking you back there constantly um even though that's frustrating because you just want to be at tier three once you've been there like once 
Um, so I think that's part of it. I think it's like attempting to force dynamic experiences for the player. Um, the problem is just that we've never been forced to have dynamic experiences in the past because Zombies has been a pretty linear experience in terms of the win condition being getting to a higher round and that's it. Uh, yeah. And now the win condition is like five different win conditions. And yeah, yeah. Treyarch's like, we want you to ha to experience all of them. Uh, but some people are like, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to survive and be powerful and then quit the game. Uh, so that's my that's my... I don't know how how logical that takes sounds to you, but that's my sort of that sounds pet pretty logical. Theory. I think another issue I have is just like the downtime. You know, I was playing with mm. Luke. I was playing with Luke, and and <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, at some points I just kind of like alt tab out, and then I'll watch something on on the side." And I'm like, "Dude, if you can afford to not give zombies your undivided full attention, something might be wrong." If like. <laughs> You're playing at yeah. a at a high difficulty or whatever, a high round, and you can just, eh. yeah, you know, like tune tune the game out. That's certainly not something you can do past like round fifteen. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, like that is that's an interesting point. I, so I'm there's curious. A little, you also, yeah, there's a little yeah. too much downtime in just like running to objectives, and sometimes I I get to like contracts, and the contract is like bugged in the table, so I can't do it, and then I feel like I wasted part of my time limit. Walking mm. through an objective that glitched out. Or I, ha yeah. I have another clip where we get to fight this boss and the boss just does this thing where it's it's like uh, stuck. stuck. Yeah, and it's just doing yep. that. And it was like, well, you know, that wasted time. So anytime like, it, you know, it, it, like with a time limit and then when you get kicked out, you have to come back in. If you feel like you're wasting time, then you feel like you're wasting fun, if that makes sense. Yes, 100%. Like, and if your time's not respected, you feel like you're being taken for a fool kind of thing yeah um so i yeah I, I fully fully feel that uh if if i'm gonna invest myself into this in this way like why is it that the game is gonna so frequently be like oh no actually you just have to run for a minute and a half now just like just 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 do that right whereas previously in zombies we'd be like well, if i want to progress i can shoot the zombies in this room or in the next room or on the other side of the map it doesn't matter mm -hmm. i'm still like getting that instant hit of the the sort of pace make a crawler pressing. make a crawler right yeah so um i would like you to play the devil's advocate for me for a moment here okay mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah um what do you love about modern warfare zombies mm. there's got to be something there's got to be something in there that you're like you know what that worked for me that's new and i respect it or i had fun with this one slither of the game there's got to be something uh it's completely it's a completely new formula. It's okay. like something we haven't really seen combined with zombies before. So, mm. you know, there's always that conversation in Call of Duty of like, I want it to be the exact same. It's it's the exact same. I want it to be completely new and different. And I think as far as like formula wise, this is a pretty good middle ground. Um, So I, I think the, yeah, the formula of combining it with like DMZ and Warzone for some people, it's it feels completely new, and the map is big, so there's a lot of potential gameplay opportunities, areas to explore, and um, the tier three zone is enticing. You look at it on the map, and it's all red, and you're like, I, I want to see what's in there. You know, yeah. I want to I want to power up and, and get there because that's I bet some crazy shit happens in there. So yeah. there there is an enticement factor to like. Um, not just get to a high round, but to get to the hardest part area of the map and to experience mm. what that's like. Um, Do you feel like the the new formula aspect of things, will that mean that you intend to revisit it at some point to be like, okay, it was a new form formula, as with any new formula, as with any Nocturne Totem, like in the next map we'll get perks, right? Sort of vibe. Right, um, right. So do you reckon that with this, you might be like, well, okay, I'll give it like a two seasons, three seasons maybe to get some, get some patches and, and, and change and transform um, and then be like, okay, maybe the new formula works now in the way that at launch, it didn't work for me. It works for some people, but it's, it's not sort of hitting for you, uh, but, but, but may do in the future. Do you reckon? 
I, I, I might. Yeah, a lot of times when I when I go back to check out a game, it's because I get a lot of comments on my channel <laughs> or on Twitter that are like, yo, they just had this new update. You should really check it out. And, and when I get mm. enough of those, I'm like, you know, all right, all right. If it's like okay. as good as some of you are saying, I'll give <laughs> it another shot. I think um, that's... a big yeah, thing I... that I, I, ever since Black Ops 1 came out, I feel like mm. that ha that should have set the standard for like day one zombies content. You had uh, you had Kino, and then you unlocked five after you beat the campaign. And then I I think did you have to beat the campaign to get dead ops, or did you have to put a code in the computer? I can't remember how you got uh, dead ops. Oh god, that's yeah, that's a throwback. Really but ancient history at that point. Two maps. I, yeah. Uh, two maps. Dead ops is kind of optional, but for me, like. Two maps is, is there's a pretty good chance I'll like one of them. But it, when it when a new zombies game comes out and it's just the one map, it's like you either like it or you don't mm. or you feel like kind of mid on it, you know? Yeah. So I, I feel like a lot a lot so of what was... I don't like about the mode could be yeah. fixed if there was just kind of something to appease me and my tastes, if that makes sense. Ah, OK, yeah, because I mean, that is an interesting aspect of your critique of the mode is that a lot of people actually don't think that it's a hot take that you're sort of sitting on. They think that it's actually just like exactly in line with their opinions. Like the community is quite divided in a sense because yeah. some people are like, it's not round based. So it automatically sucks. And other people are like, well, uh, it's not round based, but I'm, I'm having a good time. Right. And so the having a good time, people are like, you're writing it off. Cause it's, because it's not round based i mean that's a hot take but then the other folks are like it's it's not a hot take to say i want round based like everyone yeah. feels that way right yeah um so it sounds like the the round based aspect of it for you is just a really <clears throat> important key component um yeah and... if i if i don't like whatever is new i would at least mm. have some like another shot I feel like that goes for like any any game, any zombies game. You know, Black Ops 4 came out with three maps at launch and a lot of people didn't like oh, uh, Voyage of Despair. I have a poster of it over there. I didn't like Voyage uh -huh. of Despair, but I loved Nine. Wait, you didn't like Voyage, but you have a poster of Voyage. Yeah, I got it from, uh, I think, GameStop. It was the midnight release <laughs> okay. or something. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. Nice. I, okay. I didn't like it as much as Nine. It, it, like out of okay. the three that it came out with, Voyage was probably my least played. Uh -huh. Um, and then nine and what was the, oh, what was the third one? Well, there were, there were, there's Blood of the Dead as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood of the Dead. Yeah. That one was yeah. awesome. I, I, I like yeah. that as a remake, but you know what I mean? Like it just zombies, zombies maps are way harder to make, I think, than pretty much like, well, Anything. not, not as, <laughs> not as hard as like a war zone map, I would say, but yeah, I, the the sheer scale of that map probably means that it's been yeah. in development for like two years <laughs> or yeah, something exactly. crazy. But just um, like the the more the more chances you have to to enjoy this new zombies mm. mode, I feel like um, if you don't like Kino, maybe you'll like five. If you don't like five, maybe you'll like Kino, kind of thing. Sure, yeah, a hundred percent. So so what's interesting is there's been recently some leaks suggesting that there are going to be two round race experiences on launch for the next zombies that's coming out next mm. year so your ears are perked up to that i'm i'm i'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure um, my brows are up yeah <laughs> but the 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 maybe closing sort of sort of uh note that i will add here is that rumor has it and this is not confirmed but rumor has it that the uh the rifts that i mentioned are, are being added in season one uh, are gonna be like a really high skill sort of like end game task of some description um and it may be that there is some kind of round based component to that it might not be rounds mm. it might be waves um waves. But there's been yeah there's been rumblings of that sort of uh, sort of oh, thing didn't they call it that didn't they call it waves in cold war They've they've jumped around a little bit with the terminology because they've also had world tears in Outbreak, um, which was like sort of like being on a round, but that wasn't tied to time. It was just tied to when you went to the next world tier. So yeah, like yeah. They've, they've 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 played around with it a little bit, but the uh, the hope that I have is that 
there are some kind of wave system within the rifts um, and it's really hard, right? That is my hope. And the reason I'm hoping that is because then I don't need to stress about tier one, tier two, tier three. Eh, no, that's not, that's not the conversation I'm having. I'm talking about jumping into the match, maybe doing like one or two contracts just to get some points for like a perk or one level of pack or something. Mm -hmm. And then jumping in the rift and it's like, the world is going crazy and I have to be on my absolute A game and I can't pause and think about something else and I can't like drift off to sleep while I'm playing it. And yeah, I have you can't to be... all tab out. You have to just yeah. completely zero in on it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would I would say if that's the case, I'll shoot you a DM and I'll let oh, you yeah, know yeah. That, that the wave system is, or sorry, that the rift system is is actually worth, worth a look. Yeah, then um, we can play it together and then uh, maybe record a little collab video. I'd be down for that. Let's let's let's, let's do it. Let's we'll, make we'll, it happen. we'll give this we'll give this a fun. few months. <laughs> we'll give we'll give Warzone Zombies a few months, maybe a couple Warzone seasons. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I call it. <laughs> I think it's really <laughs> funny because that's what it is to me. It's <laughs> I mean it I mean literally is the Warzone map, so it's fair enough. It's, yeah. it, it is fair. Um, but yeah, this has been this has been a lot of fun today. Um, I think we can pretty much wrap it up here. Um, I've I've heard some things that you've loved about the mode. I've heard some things that you've you've not loved so much about the mode. I think we've found mm -hmm. some common ground. I think that we've oh we've absolutely yeah covered a lot of bases. It's been good. It, it's easy um, to just like come up with some inflammatory hyperbolic statement on Twitter that riles people up, and uh, I'll watch my tongue a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> well, the the closing question I have for you is actually not about modern warfare zombies. Okay, mm -hmm. we briefly spoke about this before we before we started recording today. Um, I need to settle the score, okay, with you. I need you to clear up some some confusion that the zombies community has about your zombies' opinions, okay? Mm -hmm. Specifically, oh. I need to know, what is your favorite zombies game of all time? And I need to know what is your favorite map of all time, okay? I'm putting the spotlight on you here. Give me the game mm. and the map. The map can be in a different game if you, if you should so choose. Okay, you're... It, it, my favorite is different mm. than what I think is the overall best. Let me just make okay. that clear. So Give my, me both. okay. Well, obvi yeah. obviously, uh, the best is Black Ops Three. Just bang for buck, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. The uh, my favorite might be a toss. Oof. Hmm. Yeah. Probably gonna be Black Ops One. Okay. Either Kino. Ascension okay. or Darius. Uh, One of those wait, three. The, the Black Ops 1 version of Darius then, not the World at War version? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay, okay. That is... That is a, that's a strong one pick. Of the, a one of those Darice three. Fan, so. I, I don't know if I can pick a, a favorite, a number one out of those three. I think I might have to go with Darius. Uh, yeah. Okay. That Hell was the yeah. one... I, that, that's tied to like my... Uh, um, like high school years, we would come back, mm. you know, uh, after school and we would just play Darius and see just how high we could get on the rounds. And, and we always came up with interesting strategies of like, all right, don't op don't ever open this door. Keep yeah, this yeah, door yeah. closed. So, cause they will all funnel in this way. If you open this door, it fucks everything up and we're screwed. <laughs> yeah. You know, so the catwalk and all that, all that good stuff back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say black ops one. I, I put a whole lot of time to, into way back in the day. Uh huh. Okay, that's useful context to be honest, because I've I've heard in my comment sections that you're a Bo3 hater. I've seen I've seen people be like, yeah, this man doesn't like shadows. Like, what was he smoking? I um, was. But at we'll one correct point. the record now. Okay. Okay. I was at one point. Mm. Funny enough, it was Black Ops 4 Zombies that got me to see the light. That got me to uh, open my mind to the opportunities of new new style zombies where with custom you, classes and yeah. scepters and gobble gums and all this shit after i played black ops 4 zombies i went back to bo3 and i was like you know what i kind of just had a stick in my ass about this the whole time didn't i <laughs> i was just kind of like i was like it's new i don't like it you know Isn't but i think uh, that's that's a uh, reminiscent of what of what the vibe is with modern warfare zombies as well but you know what? You know what? Probably <laughs> tainted my experience is I went to my cousin's house one day and we played uh, this like Black Ops Two Zombies. My first experience was on Transit. Absolutely yeah. hated it. Absolutely hated uh, it. And then I was like, Transit, Transit damaged me. <laughs> is the trauma from that has yeah, stayed that, with you to yeah, this day? Yeah, it was the fucking fire on the ground. But no, I um, 
I really love the customization and progression in both BO3 and Black Ops 4 Zombies. I love wow. being able to prestige and like get custom loadouts and add attachments to them and, you know, even get new camos. I, I really love that whole system. Um, mm. At least the progression in both of them because I've... I, it kept me grinding for a, a while. Right. Yeah. And oh, I would, yeah. okay. I would use a lot of weapons that I wouldn't normally use because I could unlock attachments for them, you know? Yeah. And that's where I think, like, the, the mission system in this game, in a little while, once they figure out some more fun types of missions for us to do, could be really cool. Like, if I'm motivated to do stuff that I wouldn't normally do in my, in my given match, and it means that that gameplay is more mixed up, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, this match I'll... I'll do a knife only game and I'll see what that's like to take down an abomination knife only. Like I'll have to strategize in a new way. I think that could be cool. So I, I, I think that there's some crossover there too. Yeah. Um, so to clear the but, record up, I used to hate, or I used to not hate. I used to not get black ops three zombies. I, um, okay. I think uh, I had a buddy run me through shadows. I think that Tim, Tim Hansen and, and Lex also helped me through that one. Or maybe I had some other friends, but I saw a lot of cool shit in that in that level, and and I've uh, I've warmed up to it. Hell yeah! Okay, well that's that's good because I love Shadows with all my heart. <laughs> I love it so much, dude. Um, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that we put some respect on Shadows of Evil's name, which, by the way, now is if I my math is right, I think it's eight years old. Yeah, is that which is terrifying? Twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah. 15. Black Ops 3 was 2015? What was 2016? Was that yeah, Infinite Warfare? E end of oh. end of 2015 was Black Ops 3 on November oh. 6th. So, oh, like, boy. It's so old now, dude. You're <laughs> old. <laughs> we are officially both Abe Simpson. Um, what's so, that fucking that video or that episode where Mr. Krabs is getting old and he wakes out of bed and he's like 20 <laughs> chins and he's all crusty and he has this 5 o'clock shadow? That is us, sadly. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for joining me today. This has been a, been a great chat. Yeah, there and, was not, um, not one sentence of nonsense on this yes, podcast. Not one. Agreed. We kept it nonsense free, and I'm I'm very glad glad to hear that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. If you guys have enjoyed listening, drop a like on it as well, and I'll see you in the next episode for more No Nonsense very soon. Awesome. Thanks for having me on. Maybe next time we'll, we'll play you. Modern Warfare Maybe. Zombies. Mm, Hell maybe yeah. make a Let's video make out of that. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace. Bye for now.